Hey everyone, so I'm here in all my natural makeup free horror inducing naturalness. I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, I'm not wearing any makeup at the minute today because I thought I would do something a little bit different today and kill like seven birds with one stone and do kind of like loads of stuff in one video that I've been kind of wanting to do for ages. So I've had a few people asking about my makeup, a few people saying how like they would actually quite like to see how I put my makeup on and how I do my makeup and things like that. I thought I'd answer a few questions that I've seen in the comments. I thought I would just kind of talk a little bit about some stuff that's on my mind and hopefully we can make a vaguely coherent video out of this. I don't know, I've not decided yet. You'll have to excuse me because I do look seriously rough at the minute because um, I've broken out in so many little spots that you can see up here and on my cheeks because um, I've been stressed as hell. You know, my anxiety has been at, like high again. Um, and because I've been stressed, I've also been drinking more caffeine, which also makes me break out. So the mix of stress and caffeine with a bit of sugar um, means I now have spots. And it's gross. Um, and I don't like it, so you'll have to excuse me. But that said, you know, it's human. Everyone gets spots, right? For all the people who comment saying like, why do I wear makeup in videos and stuff like that, um, strangely it's mostly like kind of 40 and 50 year old men who ask me why I wear makeup and it's because you're so insecure. No, not really, I just, I think it's fun. And don't judge me, I haven't washed this in like a week, it's gross. Yeah, no, the whole act of like putting on makeup and building up a look, it's fun. And I kind of use it in the same way that I use like art and painting and things like that. I like the process, I like learning how to use new materials and mixing and blending colours and just having fun with things, you know? I think a lot of the people who think that makeup's just silly don't realise how much kind of time and effort you have to put into learning how to use products in the right way and how very easy it is to go wrong and you know i i've been using makeup for years and i'm still learning and i'm still not very good that said i don't really like full coverage makeup that much um this foundation that i'm wearing is like a medium coverage one it still lets my flaws shine through a little bit which i don't mind about because they're part of me it still lets my skin breathe it still looks very natural which is nice it just evens me out a little bit, you know? To the person on my last video who asked why my eyes had a red tint, it's called eyeshadow and it's fun. I was going to kind of like a sunset sunrise theme on that one with the yellow and the red and the orange and the pink and blending them all together and I, I think it looked really pretty and I really enjoyed that look and I did like it. It's a really really fun one to apply. Some people don't understand, they just see people who wear makeup and think oh they must be super insecure about this or that or whatever. I'm I'm not that insecure about the way I look anymore. I definitely used to be. I definitely hated how I looked. Um, I still dislike a lot of the things about how I look. I don't like my teeth. I'd like to get them fixed. I'm actually saving up to try and get some like um, braces at the minute. Our dentist does quotes around £3,000 for the... I, I don't really know what they are exactly. They're called kind of like invisible braces and they kind of sit behind your teeth apparently so they're not going to be too noticeable but I really want to get these ones straightened up down here. I couldn't get it done as a teenager because the dentist said it was purely for cosmetic reasons, not um, any health reasons or anything. So um, yeah, like the NHS wouldn't cover it or whatever, so we'd have to pay for it. And obviously we couldn't afford that as a kid for me. So I never got to have them done. But now I'm older, I'm earning money. I can finally get myself sorted, you know? Part of it is a kind of vanity thing. Part of it is just like, I've always looked at people with straight teeth and just wondered what it would be like, you know, to have a nice smile. I'd love that. Um, and part of it is just that this one sticks forward at the front. So there's always a horrible buildup of plaque around the back that I find really difficult to clean myself. Um, when I always have to spend forever with the hygienist with her cleaning it whenever I go. Um, so if I didn't have that, that would be nice. Speaking of insecurities, one of the comments I got on my last video, the Jordan Peterson one, well, I got a hell of a lot of comments on there. Do they know how to hit my insecure spots? Um, <laughs> one of the comments I got was that apparently, you know, it's okay for me to be critical of the book because clearly it's just because I'm insecure that I'm not as smart as Jordan Peterson is and it's okay, not everyone can be that smart. <laughs> which kind of made me laugh a bit because I don't know how smart he is but I don't feel threatened by him. I'm not really one for comparing myself to anyone else, you know, like I know I'm smart and I know my strengths, or rather I know I'm not stupid. I know that like if I'd wanted to I could have definitely gone on and done a master's and a PhD and gone down the academia route, 
if I wanted, but it's not what interests me, so that's not what I'm doing with my life. There are, there are lots of things that I'm good at that I just don't want to do with my life. Like when I was at school, I was, I was really good at like maths and physics and stuff, but they weren't what I found interesting. So when I got to A-level, they're not the subjects I took because they didn't feel very me. I took like media studies and sociology and biology because they're what interested me. Um, and English Lit as well. Like I really enjoyed that. Even now, Dan always says like, oh, um, you'd make a really good computer scientist or whatever. Or he, he always comes home and he, he gives me these like, logic puzzle type things that um they give to interview candidates sometimes or that they've been like trying to figure out at work for fun and stuff like that and you know the kind of ones that are like oh you know there are this many balls 19 of them are the same weight and one of them is heavier or lighter than the others and you have to figure out you know how to do that in like three moves or whatever you know those sorts of things Um i really like doing those kinds of puzzles and apparently how you think about them and how quickly you can solve them and stuff um, is quite an important part of the whole figuring out um, I know how to solve problems in programming and stuff because Dan, Dan does app development for a bank so he does all the tech stuff and there was another one when we first met as well where Dan was a bit like oh I don't doubt girls can be clever I've just never really met one who's that smart and I was like, hmm, okay. And so then he was like, all right, we were doing this in the common room today, like, see if you can figure it out. You know, it took me and this one guy, like, a good sort of couple of days to work on it. And it was this one about cards and, um, you know, face up, face down, that sort of thing. And I sat there in half an hour and was like, okay, this is what I'm thinking. This is how I'd work it out. This is why I'd do it. And Dan was, like, really shocked. And he's like, how did you do that so quickly? Like, there are PhD students who can't do it that quickly. And I was like, oh no, it's just how I think. Um, so my point is, I know I'm smart. I'm not intimidated by anyone else. Because I don't compare how smart I am to anyone else. I think the point is that everyone can be very, very intelligent and smart. They just have to find what they're good at, you know? You have to find your strengths and work to them. And sometimes what you're good at isn't always what you enjoy, and that's okay. Um, you have to figure out what you want to do in life. Because um, again, after I said that I didn't find Jordan Peterson that interesting to listen to, I had someone commenting saying like, oh, well, you know, you should sit down for an afternoon and watch his lectures and read all his stuff and do this and do this and do this because if you don't, it's totally dishonest and something and something and something. And I'm like, but why would I want to do that? I said going into that video about Jordan Peterson that it was going to be just a book review and just my opinion on what the book was like and one of the things I was going to comment on was how much I enjoyed it and part of that is how much I like the writing style and um, how likely I was to recommend it to anyone else. Do I think people can get stuff out of the book? Um, it, it wasn't some intellectual review of the content, it was just a person's book review, that's all it was. So to the person who was saying, you know, I should take like hours and days, you know, out of my schedule to really go in depth with all this stuff that Peterson has said and written and done and me 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 like I I'm not going to because it's boring I think a book should be able to be read and enjoyed by itself um I don't think you should need a history of what the author has said to necessarily enjoy the book especially when it's like meant to be a a, a kind of popular science book as Jordan Peterson's book is. I know it sounds stupid, but like, I'm not with my channel and stuff. I'm not some big academic. I'm not some science journalist. I'm not, I don't know. I'm no one special. And like, I'm gonna spend my time doing what I enjoy, not what I feel I should do, if that makes sense. Like, if I wanted to read 10 boring papers in depth, if I wanted to do that every day, I'd have gone into academia. What I wanna do is read and watch the stuff that I find interesting and then just comment on it. And sometimes, like, to be informed, I do have to read the boring stuff. Like, oh my god, I read so many papers about lobsters for that video. Um, when I don't care about lobsters, but I wanted to make sure I was getting my facts right. So I think it's okay to do that. But again, I was still kind of enjoying myself because it was what I wanted to do. It's a really tough one. Again, this kind of brings me back a lot to, like, the things... Um with like what I want to do on my channel. I think a lot of people coming in just like definitely see me the wrong way. Um, like one person saying like, you know, if you want to be an intellectual, you should do this and this and this. I'm like, I don't want to be an intellectual. Like that's not me. Um, and yeah, there are some people who are, 
and stuff and who want to be seen that way, but I'm not one of them. The people are telling me like, oh, you should watch this video and this video and this video. I'm like, well, okay, but they're doing things their way and I'm doing things my way. Like, and it might not be what you want to watch, but in that case, that's okay because you can go and watch the others. Rambling a bit here. The point is, when I first started YouTube and stuff, I said that I was kind of inspired to talk about certain things like atheism and stuff because of people like Cosmic Skeptic and, you know, um, yeah, I definitely felt inspired by them. But now, the longer I do this and the more my channel grows and the more I just kind of become comfortable with myself and confident in myself and stuff, um, the less I want to be like him because that's not me, like, I don't, I don't want to feel like him at all, no offense, um, like, I, I think Alex is a great guy, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying, like, it's not what I want to do, um, I think in terms of, like, content inspiration and stuff, if we want to put it that way, I definitely find myself looking up more to people, like, ready to glare now than I do to, like, say, Cosmic Skeptic, um, because, I don't know, I kind of, like, I love how she never apologises for having an opinion, and I love how she covers, like, a huge range of topics. I love how she's just, like, a really nice person with an amazing, like, style and dress sense. Um, I just, I think she's a great person, and I do really admire her and her content. And I, I've been watching her since she was at, like, I don't know, 15, 20k, something like that. She was really, really tiny when I discovered her. Um, and I just, I really like her. And I know she's not, like, everyone's cup of tea, I guess, um, but she's definitely someone who I do look up to and enjoy and, yeah. And again, she's not, like, an intellectual and she's not claiming to be an expert in any field, which is just like me. Um, and I kind of like that. She's just an entertaining, nice person who's fun to watch and, to me, that's what YouTube's about and that's what I want from YouTube and that's what I want to give to YouTube. A big thing that I'm trying to work on at the minute is just not letting negative comments and stuff like feed my insecurity, if that makes sense. I've been feeling really insecure about a lot of stuff at the minute and I think certain comments are feeding it. And then when, when something kind of hits a nerve like that, I definitely get defensive and kind of angry and upset and I, I do feel quite kind of like attacked um, and it's not not healthy and I don't like the kind of person I become when I feel insecure and defensive. I feel quite mean sometimes and I don't like it and that's something I'm working on because I don't ever want to be mean. It's just, it's it's hard sometimes when, when people leave certain comments and they don't kind of see you as a human being. It's very hard to remember that they're people as well. It's difficult to remember that they are people themselves with like families and friends and probably problems and yeah it's, it's something I'm trying to work on. I think I'm in kind of like a very strange position because when I do make videos and stuff obviously I want to try and tell you about the stuff that I'm proud of and the stuff that I like you know I'll, I'll tell you about how great things are with me and Dan because overall at the minute they are fantastic but that doesn't mean we've always had this like super easy relationship if that makes sense. Um, I do worry that I'm kind of putting out this view that made my life seem more perfect and easy than it is, and then it has been. Yeah, like every couple, when me and Dan first got together and first kind of started getting to know each other, even when we were just friends and stuff, like things have never been like the easiest. Dan had just literally, days before we met, had literally just got out of a relationship with a girl who was not very nice. And, you know, she, she cheated on him, she hurt him. Um, she made him very insecure about himself, and when I met him, he, he wasn't willing to stand up for himself. He was very kind of withdrawn. He was clearly very insecure. And when me and him met, like, I was feeling pretty alone and insecure as well, um, but in a different way. I just moved to an area I didn't know anyone, and I was, I was very kind of, like, quick to be angry with people, if that makes sense. So, like, when I found out that Dan had been hurt and that he was still hurting and stuff. I I definitely held a grudge against his ex, who I didn't even know for a very, very long time. And because I was like, how can anyone treat someone this way? How can anyone make someone feel this way? And so on. And because um, even just viewing Dan as a friend, like at the time, um, I was very, very protective of him. And that, that was a big kind of thing I had. I, I was very bad for holding grudges against people who had hurt my friends and just staying mad at people. 
And I think Dan has helped me let go of some of the anger. And I've helped Dan be more willing to stand up for himself and the people he cares about. So I think we've definitely been good for each other. But that's not to say our relationship has always been completely like easy, plain sailing. Like it's taken a lot of work and stuff to get to where we are today and how happy we are with each other and how well we work with each other and stuff. Um, it's not just been like we met and fell madly in love and lived happily ever after. Like nothing's ever that easy. That's the other thing as well, like it's very easy for people to look at me and call me like a white privileged little girl or a, or a rich little white girl or blah 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 blah. But again, like things haven't exactly been plain sailing for me and everything I have today I've worked incredibly hard for. Hang on, it's raining outside, it's got really dark, I'm gonna go turn a light on. Yeah, ev everything that I've got today is something I've worked incredibly hard for. for. And in, in some ways I know I'm very very lucky that, you know, I live in the UK and we can get student loans and stuff like that and I, I know I'm lucky for that and I'm, I'm grateful for that. That doesn't mean I've just had everything handed to me, you know? Um, I got my first job at 14 and while I was doing my A-levels, working hard to get into uni, I was working two jobs so that I could afford to save up for uni, that I, so I could buy the things I needed for uni, so I could pay for my school dinners and things like that. From 16 onwards, I didn't like accept money or anything from my parents and um, they, they did, they put a roof over my head and I'm super grateful for that and they, they paid my, you know, my share of the bills and stuff but everything else came from me and everything else was what I worked hard for. I've worked jobs that I didn't like, I've worked jobs folding paper for photo album companies if that makes sense, um, I've worked jobs in retail, I've worked bar jobs where I've had to scrub sick off tables at 4am, I've worked in a jewellery shop, I've worked in a pharmacy, I've worked office jobs. Um, at 21, I was made head of marketing for an online book retailer because I was good at my job. I've done all sorts of stuff and not all of it's been glamorous and not all of it's been easy. And some of it I've hated. I've worked for the student room. I've worked for big companies, small companies, family companies, um, all sorts of stuff. I didn't just wake up one day and have everything handed to me. I'm from a very working class family. My mum, didn't earn a lot of money. My dad was made redundant when I was very young and so we didn't have an income from him coming in. Everything I have, I've worked hard for and built up myself. And it, it, it's easy to look at me now and say like, oh, I've got a nice flat and I own a lot of clothes and makeup and books and I've got a gorgeous dog, but it's all taken years of hard work to get. Nothing's been handed to me. And it, it does upset me when people just assume I've been given this stuff. It said like I don't want to paint myself as some kind of like victim or like some little perfect girl who's overcome these hardships. Like I'm not. Like everyone I've made mistakes and I've done things that I'm not proud of or happy about and and now that I'm in a better part of my life I do feel like I'm trying to make up for the times I've screwed up. Sometimes that does mean going up to people I haven't seen in years and saying hey I'm sorry I was a huge bitch to you. It, and then you know it is it is hard to apologize for that especially years later but I think it's necessary. I make it sound like I've been like a horrible person. Um, I, I've not, I don't think. I do try and be nice and be good and look out for people, but yeah, everyone screws up sometimes, I think. I know, I just, I, I don't want people getting the wrong impression of me. And I don't want people thinking I'm this like perfect little girl who never does anything wrong and is super nice to everyone all the time. And then one day I'm gonna get exposed because I called someone a bitch or, you know, I, I told Dan's ex to, F off in a pub once and one day she's gonna come out and expose me for saying that. Yeah, no, I, I'm not gonna pretend I'm like this perfect faultless person because I'm not. I think the point is that like while I've never intentionally gone out of my way to hurt anyone or be mean to anyone, as just an ordinary regular person, of course I've made mistakes and hurt people. I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm trying to portray myself as some like perfect, completely moral whatever because I know I'm not. No one is. I'm well aware that I have many, many faults, you know? I just feel like there's so much going around in my mind at the minute, and so many of you have been so lovely and supportive and kind, and then so many other people have been like, I don't know, just shouting all the, I guess you could say the right insults at the right time to make me a big crying mess, you know? Oh god, see I'm, oh, I'm knocking everything over, I'm sorry. YouTube is definitely one of those things that would be a lot easier if I had some kind of like online persona to hide behind, you know? Like, I, I see people who like have characters and avatars and usernames and it helps them kind of disconnect a bit from their channel. 
Um, I, I also know some people who do that and it doesn't help them disconnect. Some people do. And part of me wishes sometimes that I could do that or at least when I was on camera, if I had some kind of act I could put on or character I could get into, maybe it would be easier and I wouldn't take everything so personally. But I just don't think that's very me. Same as like where people say sometimes that they don't, you know, like I, I'm not talking about a majority here because the majority of you are lovely and supportive and nice. You seem to like what I do and my presenting style and everything. Some people say that they don't like the way that I present my ideas and they'd rather I was a bit more kind of like formal about it. And some p people seem to expect more of like a video essay style thing just because I'm in the kind of skeptic community and that's what most people do I think but that's that's not me I know some people say that I sound stupid sometimes because I struggle with pronouncing certain words um, I think that just comes because I read a lot and I don't really watch a lot of stuff to learn things if that makes sense like when I'm trying to learn something I'm more of a like I read and I make notes, so I don't always know how things are pronounced. I, I could look it up, but that sort of stuff just doesn't stay with me in my head, and even when I've heard something, I still struggle to pronounce things. It's why I'm terrible at languages, you know? Like, I, I took my French GCSE a couple of years early, because I was, I was good at French, um, and I could read and write French pretty amazingly for my age. Um, you know, I was, I was reading whole novels in French when I was, like, 14, but couldn't speak it for the life of me. The pronunciation, I, I just, I couldn't do it. It was ridiculous. So yeah, I know the, the point is that like, I'm not, I'm not very good at pronouncing things. And some people say that makes me sound stupid. Um, and other times people just don't like the kind of casual way I have of talking about things. And again, they think it makes me sound stupid. I know I'm not stupid. And I know that if I want to sound smart and fancy and, you know, show all, all my smarts, I could just write some long essay because I was always good at that in school and uni and sixth form. Like I always did very well. And but I don't want to just sit here and read an essay to you because I don't know. It just it doesn't seem very me, and it doesn't sound genuine. Um, I think I'd rather just kind of like talk to you about what's on top of my head. And sometimes that does mean that I I guess I make mistakes or that I don't say things right. That's one of the things I have. I sometimes assume that certain things are just obvious and I don't say them. So like there was a whole thing a while back where um, it was probably like Debbie Pearl or someone was going on about how like you know women should be in the kitchen and women should do this and women should do this and men should do this and obviously when people like Debbie Pearl talk about women they mean people born with vaginas and that's what she means right? So I made a joke to try and point out her ridiculousness by saying something like oh yes because my vagina stops me building furniture or something, right? And the idea was, I was trying to show how stupid her ideas of gender and sex and whatever were. That that was the point. Um, and then I had loads of people coming out saying like, oh, you're so transphobic because, you know, not all women have vaginas. And I'm like, well, I thought it was obvious that trans people exist. I thought it was obvious that not all women have vaginas. I thought it was obvious that normal, nice, rational people know those people exist and I don't have to put like a caveat in after every joke I say. Like I, I felt like in the video if I'd explained the joke it would have been stupid. Like what has more impact? Me saying yes because my vagina stops me building furniture or me saying yes because my vagina stops me building furniture because Debbie Pearl seems to think that a vagina is the only thing that makes you a woman and women shouldn't build furniture. Um, but of course trans people exist. Don't forget trans people. Not all women have vaginas and not all men have penises. And blah 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 blah. Like, it, uh, like all that stuff just seems so obvious to me to say that. And I don't appreciate people saying that or people calling me transphobic because I didn't point out something that I thought was obvious. In my life I've done nothing but support trans people and want the best for them and want them to have, you know, the same rights as anyone else and be treated as well as anyone else and, and I just, I don't appreciate people saying, oh, you're a disgusting transphobe because I didn't explain criticism of someone else. 
I, I know, it, it seems really bizarre to me and it's... So my point is, like, sometimes I say these things that I think are just obvious. Apparently they're not to some people and I think it's it's tough because a lot of my audience are from completely different countries and so we do have completely different experiences with what people think and say and do and so what might seem obvious to me probably isn't obvious to anyone else and that's a big thing that I'm still trying to learn and get used to. I just kind of want to sit here and get some things off my chest and it's probably like incoherent rabble but thank you for putting it with me, thank you for watching me, thank you to everyone who's been so lovely and supportive and kind and nice and just you're amazing. On on quite a few of my videos now, people have criticised me for only hearting the comments that are nice, which seems like a really weird criticism to me because for me, when I heart comments, it's like my way of saying, hey, thank you, I appreciate you, you know, thank you for commenting, thank you for being nice, you're an amazing person, I really like what you're saying, thank you, but I don't have time to type all this probably because I'm on my phone and I'm useless at typing on my phone, I always end up full of typos. That's, that's what I use hearts for, kind of like a, a thank you, I appreciate you kind of thing. I'm not gonna heart a comment that says, you're a stuck up bitch, and I'm not gonna heart a comment that calls me a dewy looking thought. I've had that. Um, I'm not gonna heart a comment that says, uh, I think you're wrong because if it's like, you know, um, hey, I think you made a mistake and this and this and this, I'll be like, yeah, heart. Because if I have made a mistake, I appreciate them telling me. Yeah, I don't know why people get so mad over what comments I heart and what I don't. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm shutting up. Thank you to everyone who's watched me and supported me and been nice. And sorry, this wasn't like the most happy, upbeat video. I'm sorry if it's a little bit of kind of incoherent rabble at times, but thanks for putting up with me. See you again soon. Thank you so much for watching today. An extra special thank you goes to Gambit and his show for Deshaun, Mark Darner, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Jaylee Moore, Religionist BS, Sir Michael Moore, Tater Thoughts, Greg Ladd, and Pixelated Skeptic. And to everyone who has supported me on Patreon this month, a huge, huge thank you and hugs and love goes out to you guys. You guys are amazing. Also worth mentioning, if you like this video, you should subscribe because that would be really cool. I have merch available if you want to go check it out. I absolutely love it. And I also host a science podcast, which you can check out called The Here and How. That's me done. I'm going to stop talking. Thanks a lot, guys.